All right, so this is going to be the linkage arm complete with the IDW. I'm going to go home. I'm going to pick my origin. I'm going to draw it on the XY plane. Guys, if you ever draw something on the wrong plane, don't redraw it. Ask me to show you how to reset the front. There's also a video that goes back to Puzzle Cube days that shows you how to reset the front. And I gave you a handout. So that should be something that you're taking care of. I'm going to draw two circles for the linkage arm. And then I'm going to connect them with a line. I want to make sure that these circles are even on that line. I need that line straight. So I'm going to use horizontal constraint. It looks like a caterpillar. Click on that. Notice now that it make, forces the line straight and forces the centers um, to be on the same line. Now I'm going to dimension one of these circles. And it's 0.1875 radius. So that means I have to times it by 2. I can dimension the other circle or I can use equals. If I click equals to this, this circle will automatically become equals to that. That's another geometric constraint for you guys. The biggest problem people, biggest mistake people make with this drawing is they don't dimension center to center. Okay, for the length. It has to be the center of one to the center of the other. They want to dimension the line itself, and it's not the line itself. It's center to center. Should be three and a half. Uh, when we go to assemble it, I'll see a lot of people who have problems because they dimension the line from here to here is three and a half, and that's wrong. It needs, once again, guys, center to center. So now I'm going to draw two more lines. Okay. Just picking spots on the circles. The height of these two is 0.25. And the distance between one of them is half of that, which is 0.125. I'm not going to bother putting on the other dimension because it's going to be driven. There's only one other thing it can be if the hole is 2.5. I'm going to use trim to trim away the part of the circles I don't need. And now I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm going to extrude. This thing is only 0.125, which is an eighth of an inch thick. And now I'm going to do my holes. I'm going to use the hole command. And I'm going to use concentric placement. Pick there. Uh, 0.128 is the diameter of that hole. Concentric reference. I'm just going to click the outside circle, apply, do the same thing on the other side, concentric reference, apply, and we're done. I'm going to put a color on it. Remember, your entire train must be colored of some sort. Uh, no gray trains or train parts. We're going to make it smooth purple to go with the Clemson theme. I'm going to save it as what it actually is, linkage arm, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on an IDW. I'm going to use PLTWA, and the project name is train, your name, the date, and the file name is linkage arm. Now, my base view is going to be my front view, and your front view should look like my front view. If it does not, you need to reset your front. I'm going to give it a top view and an ISO view. I'm not going to give it a right side view this time because it would really be pointless to give it a right side view. But this thing is teeny tiny on this paper, so I'm going to scale it up a bit. I'm going to change the scale to 1.25. And I'm going to do the same for this guy. I'm also going to make the isometric colored. <coughs> now, I'm going to dimension my linkage arm. So I'm going to go to annotate. And I'm going to use hole and thread for the one that I actually drew a hole for. And you guys know 
that you need to hit escape, double click on it, go to precision and tolerance, turn off global and change it to three decimal places so it looks like mine. I'm going to do one more thing. At the end of the word through I'm going to press return and I'm going to type in all cap, caps TYP. That stands for typical. That means if it looks the same it is the same. So that saves me from having to dimension this guy over here. I'm going to do the same thing with the radius here but I'm only going to use regular old dimension on it because it doesn't. it's not really a hole. It's just a radius. Okay, primary unit, that's going to get bumped out to four decimal places. And after the text, I'm going to put a space and type TYP. I'm going to handle my center lines next. I'm going to pick the big cross and I'm going to get the two big circles. And since they're concentric with the uh, smaller circles, they go in the same spot. I'm going to do my secondary center lines, the center line bisectors up here. And now since this is a symmetrical part, I really need to put one here too. So I'm going to pick those two lines and it puts a center line across that. So that tells every anybody who's looking at this that it needs that the part is symmetrical and that it needs to be 1.25 to the center, even if it doesn't make that abundantly clear with a dimension. The center line serves that purpose. So now I'm going to click dimension. I'm only going to dimension 0.25 here. I don't need, once again, I don't need to put in the 1.25 from the center line up because the center line does that work for me. I'm going to click center to center and I'm going to dimension up. And then the last dimension I'm going to put in is the thickness, the depth up here. And obviously I need to change that precision to three decimal places. The last thing I need to do with this drawing is I need to note that I've changed the scale. So I'm going to go to Place Views. I'm going to go, it's under Annotate Text. And somewhere over here I'm going to click and I'm going to type in Scale equals 1.25. Tell it OK. Hit Escape. Save it and you're ready to print.